Hello people and welcome to watch yet another World Team Carcasson Online Championships friendly match. This time between Tutesia and Finland. And this time we have also a viable audio, uh, or at least it should be. So I will be able to use this stream as a learning tool for my fellow Finnish players, which is just fantastic. Now, today's lineups are visible on the cargason.gg. Thanks for Sergei. And they are now going to be ranked in an ELO order. So the highest ranked, or at least the, the highest ranked uh, at the time of well at the time of when the lineups were made is the order so Gladki Alex versus Lapinkoski Pushkin BL, uh, B, B, uh, BLR versus Davinen Natasha 23 versus Nethshack and Sova versus Ilka it's only going to be 4v4 because, uh, well, sometimes it do got to be like that. But I especially want to stream this match just because, uh, just because, like, like I said, I want to have some uh, actual like live comments on the games. And since the, it is scheduled to start at 2030. Now let us see if we have started. And I think we have. Okay, uh, we seem to have some um, issues, so uh, I'm going to quickly do this and, oh no, actually, I'm um, going to do this and then I'm going to take a screenshot of this and Right, so I hope that's now fine. If I need to do something else, then then I will do that. But uh, since uh, dun, 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 dun. yes, leave and 
Okay, let's see how Lapinkoski is doing. Ranked exactly at 500. Good stuff. He has been grinding it out for uh, with the um, non-expansion versions with, with the with the base versions. So he is definitely putting in the work into practice. Okay, seems like Nethrak is in the game. So now we are going to be watching Nethrak and unfortunately we have now missed the beginning, but it's it's fine. We roll with this and hopefully all the others will be able to get their games going as well. Um, well, we immediately see a move that I very much dislike. This move doesn't really achieve anything in my mind. It, it only starts a city which is already restricted. I would much rather prefer uh, Nethrak to start a city at, for example, here, where it is not restricted at all, or then here, on uh, this side so that the city points over here and over here and so that it's gonna be rather difficult to attack too because the attacking square is already restricted by a field field and this move only really creates yet another city to, uh, to the field of blue Okay, let me do some Okay, seven point monastery for Netrack. And then uh, also Net has started another city, which uh, this time has been in a good spot, I think uh, an, in an unrestricted spot. But Natasha has started a three point road and gotten a second curve as well, now harassing Net's road. A divider, yeah, I mean, this is like kind of doable, but it is, actually it's, it's not really a good move, because you already need a city plus road tiles everywhere, here and here and here, and now you need them here. You don't want to have yourself in, the, in, in a situation where you need multiple tiles in the same spot. Or like the, the like multiple same types of tiles to different spots, because then you cannot use different types of tiles effectively. Like you see, now Neth is forced to restrict his uh, city to the starting tile and uh, his uh, monastery to a to a triple city with a road. But he also needs a starting tile here, and a starting tile would also be good here. You know, like you can you can just see like how difficult the situation of the Finnish player is getting, like by by every move that uh, both players actually make. So I think a much better option 
with this tile would be to start a city like for example I think here and starting a city pointing upwards and leaving an empty city cap so that it is as restricted as possible so that your opponent cannot make use out of it. Now Neth also starting uh, yet another city but uh, did risk his city getting blocked not entirely but uh, he enabled Natasha with an, a possibility to place something here and restrict this city even more. So you, you see, like these are the very awkward, oh, very awkward um, decisions that you have to make when you need the same types of tiles everywhere. And Natasha is just is just collecting easy points. Like Natasha has like absolutely no care in the world as um, he's gonna be able to use city caps effectively. Uh, he has a, a a six point field which is likely to get bigger. He can use oh he's um, in a winning mini battle over here. He has a finally developed monastery which he can use tiles to and then he has another nine point field so like Natasha does not have the same issues that that uh, Neth has here Natasha does not need the same types of tiles to different places it's another mm, juicy monastery and I think it was uh, actually a rather good uh, idea from Neth trying to restrict this monastery to to the final or actually not, not to the final but uh, just trying to restrict this monastery um, this monastery okay and uh, possibly making it more difficult to complete but the reason why these uh, these types of block, these types of blocks rarely work, is, be is because when there are all types of tiles that go over here uh, remaining in the deck. So now there was one road monastery remaining, one regular monastery remaining, and uh, one, two, three, four, and one uh, vanilla city cap remaining. So this square was actually completely unblockable of course there is a benefit that it can then be blocked with any of those three tiles but then at the same time you would be using two tiles to block your opponent's monastery and you would be still expanding your opponent's field by at least one city So I definitely think that uh, the the absolute um, the the biggest reason why Neth is in such a horrible situation again is because he has uh, he has uh, driven himself to a situation where he has needed the same types of tiles city caps with roads or just city is or just city tiles with roads to so many different places and like he cannot effectively use almost any other types of tiles yet another monastery for natasha and just looking absolutely wonderful for him now, although I think that uh, there might be some sort of light at the end of the tunnel, like a very small one, is if Neth is able to overrun this field. But like this attacking spot is not really that good because uh, when 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 you go with a field meeple over here you are going to be in a 2 to 1 meeple, meeple disadvantage 
and then your opponent can just place anything here and place a meeple. And then this field meeple is going to be equalized. Like this. So this is not like a real threat to, uh, to equalize the 12 point field. Now finally gets to complete one of these one of his cities and I think this is exactly what he has to do. Does give uh, three points to the field of blue but it doesn't matter at this point he just needs the uh, meeples and there actually is a chance that uh, Neth might be able to grab a like a straight road and then a a curve and finish the road and then join this field like stuff like that which uh, is definitely the things that Neth needs at this point might also be possible to still complete the city one two three four takes a six point field and at least provides a, a threat of completing this city if there are tiles to do that three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen unfortunately there are no tiles that fit here that would finish the city so in that regard this is just a seven point farmer because you also add one point to your city Natasha able to get three points for the road and get his monastery clusters out from the uh, from any potential blocking threats although blocking is uh, actually at this point of the game just inconsequential Neth does still have a possibility to attack the field I reckon from here Ah oh, no 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 no! Don't, this this is this is way worse though, because the same tiles that go over here, you would be able to use over here if you direct the, the curve like this, and this spot is much more restricted than this. And like you, you see, you see, like Neth would be just immediately able to connect to this field, because crossroads go here, but they do not go here. Just taking his meeple back. I think the game has already been decided long ago in favor of Natasha with the help of this very juicy monastery cluster from which he, uh, from which he was able to complete um, two of them and remain with one eight points. I'm still going to emphasize the situation, so if you have a lot of meeples that, uh, if you have a lot of meeples in features that require you to have the same types of tiles, you absolutely do not want to create more features that require, again, the same types of tiles. Like, this is a primary example. A track uh, already already needed a um, a city tile with a road over here, um, over here and over here, but still went for uh, to, still went for the like easy one point, but uh, then the completion of the monastery will be rather difficult actually, even though. It is not that restricted of a square, just because he needs the same types of tiles everywhere. And uh, the final score does uh, clearly also indicate that uh, Natasha just had a better overall strategy in this game, did not 
have the same issues as Netrack. Natasha was just able to uh, to very easily build his own features and did not fall into a mobile disadvantage um, almost at any point, I think, because he didn't have Meeple stuck for very long in any features. So 1-0 for Tutesia in this match. And let's then see Ah, by the way, um, hello Helge and Pichan, and then uh, one, two, three. I'm not sure uh, how to pronounce that uh, first part of the name, so I'm just gonna go with the numbers. <laughs> now, uh, let's have a look at how Lapinkoski is doing. So, a relatively even matchup uh, regarding the ELO um, points, so both players are experts, and I think we might also uh, take a look at the second game of Lapinkoski and Gladki as uh, this game seems to be running on on um, very short notice but let's have a quick analysis of the situation so uh, plus 16 for green then there is uh, plus 20 a competed ruin plus 17, plus 13, green has a 9 point field, ah sorry, it's a shared 12 point field. Wow, okay, interesting stuff. Uh, so I think at the moment the fields are dead equal, so I think uh, green is pl plus 17. And Lapinkoski needs to make a lot of stuff happen. This is this does definitely not help his position, but a wonderful find by the Finnish player here, recognizing that there was still curves or uh, still curves or a curve remaining, and saw his uh, chance to get to the field worth 12 points, but I don't think it will be enough. Adel has to connect to this ruin. Um, taking into account that even with this ruin, uh, uh, Lapinkoski will be behind in points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, this is just a just a just a great move by Lapinkoski here, recognizing that there, is, that there is still one regular curve remaining, which Gladki could use over here to join the field, and therefore blocks the connection. Which, oh wait, there wasn't. No, I, I just miscounted. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Where's the ninth? Ah, because Lapinkoski had it in hand. Okay, so it was a good move. Nice. There is definitely big time improvement in, uh, in, in the uh, skill of, of, of Lapinkoski recently which I'm very, very happy about. Tile counting is indeed one of the, one of, if not, the main improvements that I'm trying to push um, to, uh, that I'm trying to push the Finnish players to learn, because I think that in, um, it, that is going to be the most vital thing that will help them the most um, with the schedule that we have, which is just a couple of weeks of uh, learning. Still, despite the uh, great endgame moves by Lapinkoski, he does fall with 18 points. So another game point to, to Tejia. And uh, let's watch one of the games in full. Also, let's see where 
day one in is going. Okay, zero tiles, so we can very conveniently see the end result of this. Uh, there is a huge ruin by Pushkin. Now, other fields, six point field by Daywine, and, and there is a shared field, a five point. Wait, like this? This must have been just an attempt to to block this city, uh, which has been a mistake since, you know, again, the, it comes to tile counting, being aware of the tiles remaining. Like, this is a fine example of um, why you can lose points on the final tiles of the game. Like, instead of going... Uh, instead of going over, over here for two points, there seems to be at least uh, increasing the size of the field by six points, and then if this road was not peopled, then you can just take a one point, um, one point city. So at least a, a four point move, or then just take a three point city, uh, a three point road. Sorry. So definitely uh, there is room for improvement uh, for Tavainen, and in particular in uh, recognizing the the uh, tiles that are left in the deck. 10 points difference yet again to the player of uh, Tutesia. Now let us see. Okay. Whilst we wait for this game to start, let's have a quick look at Ilka's situation. Seems to be so that. Uh, Ilka has had a extremely fast uh, games with Sova, and uh, it has unfortunately been so that the uh, Tutesia player has been able to get a 2-0 fast win. So that is a point two to Tesha. Let's mark that up. And then seeing that all the other games have been now 1-0, um, it is a match point in every single game already. Okay, now is the Finnish player going to be able to put resistance? Gladki has been able to get the, the starting player advantage of four points. Lapinkoski going with a... well, the, the only possible... I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. Okay. I've been again on mute. <laughs> no. Wow, this is just going very much south, this whole thing. Okay, but the internet problem has now been fixed. And the mute is now gone. We can focus on the game. Oh my lord, this is this has been a horrifying experience for me. <laughs> ah. Okay, but I think you should now hear the hear the hear the sound, right? Yes. Ah. Okay. So let's try to make as much out of the situation as we can. So we have Lapinkoski with eight points of uh, with eight points in the lead. We have uh, Lapinkoski also with a a ruin of his own with uh, seven points. So 
plus 15. Then we have one point, it's here, which is maybe trapped. It is, there is actually one t one more tile to to here, which can save the city of Lapinkoski. Then we have a shared, a shared uh, uh, city. We have an eight point monastery, so yeah, plus 16, plus 24, 25. And then this field with only nine points and controlled by two Mipulus of Gladkis. So actually Lapikoski seems to be in a, in a plus 16 position, which is just a fantastic thing. And now let me actually che uh, check in, <laughs> in, other, in um, another place as well that the stream is actually working. As the players are thinking a little bit. Now, Klatki taking a a uh, four point road. Are there how many crossroads are there? Four, five, six. Two crossroads remaining. Um. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, Klatki does does need to take maybe even a lot of risks at the moment. Though there is a possibility to uh, to extend the field by. Uh, by six points. If Gladki is able to get the road monastery, he might actually put it here, where La where Lapinkoski has a previous monastery of his own. Even though it would give Lapinkoski a, a meeple back, it would also be like immediately a 14 point move for Gladki. And Given the situation that uh, that he is now in, which is like minus 12, 11, about, about like the minus 12, I want to say, this would be a rather huge because it would it would like instantly place Gladki in the lead, and also he would have a monastery in a rather safe spot to be honest, because there are still two regular monasteries remaining on top of the road monastery and maybe also uh, vanilla city caps one two three four there is also one vanilla city cap remaining to this square which would be able to complete that road monastery 13 tiles Kladki just uh, deciding that he's gonna use the tiles rather valuable city caps actually to to try and get just a few more points on this field, but it might be so that uh, just finishing a shared city will not be enough. Let's have a look at the points again. So uh, plus three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, twenty-two. And a 12 point field. So Lapinkoski is still plus 10 points ahead. And Gladki with only one meeple more. Now I think Lapinkoski with three meeples absolutely has to meeple the monastery. Maybe five points here, or maybe even go here for five points, but it does extend the. Uh, the uh, field by three points, potentially six, if Gladki gets a, a like any road tile over here. So therefore I would reckon that uh, this five point spot for Lapinkoski will be much better. Exactly, he goes for it, wonderful stuff. Oh, oh, this is wonderful news, because now Gladki will not be able to benefit from the road monastery as much, because he already nibbled the six point field. And this is actually Wonderful news for Lapinkoski. Wonderful news. As now Lapinkoski can actually use the road monastery himself 
to get immediate nine points and not worry about extending the field because it doesn't extend the field anymore. Because again, Kladki already has the field. So now Lapinkoski in a plus nine lead and possibly can take this game away. There is still a six point a six point field which Lapinkoski which Lapinkoski can take at some point. Or this, this is Oh Oh, that's a, that's a super evil move by Gladki, but, but Lapinkoski gets the Road Monastery, a wonderful spot over here, nine points, and gives, it, uh, gives him nine points with no meeple investment, as, and now as, Laping, as Gladki is not able to get the, mo the Road Monastery over here, he's not going to be able to get this meeple back, but there might be a way for Gladki to go over here and then connect this three-point farmer to his main farm that is controlled by three meeples, but it wouldn't be actually as bad because this uh, this farm is again only three points, so it would be only a six point move, which seems that Lapinkoski is not too worried about connecting. Uh, it is not too worried about the connection of this uh, of this small field, but I hope that he does recognize it. But there might be so that there are no no actually suitable tiles to go here, which would be a wrong assume. Wait, it wouldn't be. All monasteries are out, road monasteries are out. There might actually not be any tile that goes here. A five point move for Kladki as uh, the city is also on the field of Lapinkoski. Now the question is, actually it's not, because uh, even if there was a tile here, then Lapinkoski would not be able to, to prevent that anymore. I hope there isn't. Oh, there is. Oh, that's painful. That's super painful now. It's going to be a, a 13 point move that Gladke will, will be able to make. A 13 point move. Ah, oh, this. That's very unfortunate. Also, I did miss at the time, but uh, with this, uh, with this curve, uh, Lapigoski, even if he would not feel like uh, um, deleting this connection from existence, which I think he should, if he was aware, if if he was aware of the remaining tiles, he could take just the six point field at the north and invest the final meeple, but there wasn't really any tiles that he needs the final meeple for, because there is no feature that he can score more like more than six points with. And Ah oh, it's gutted. It's gutted. Ale Gladke wins by just one point and gets the 2-0 win. But it was like totally preventable because see the thing is that um, if you know the remaining tiles or at least the tiles that go here then uh, uh, you would know that there is like after the, after this curve there would only be one single well, one singular tile being the field triangle that, that goes here so if you place this curve over here like any in any way you will block this connection and you will be able to save this uh, this small farm that was at the time only worth three points but uh, would be now six points that would be a, a very decisive uh, a, a a very decisive move because again the net points from this move was one and from this it would be like uh, like net, as as a net point it would be a, a a plus minus zero but it would remove the only threat the only threat that Gladki has or had which was connecting the fields together 
So had Lapinkoski found this move, I think it, it would have been a hundred percent win. I don't, I don't think there would have been anything that Gladki was able to, able to do after that. But unfortunately, Lapinkoski did not find this move, and this allowed Gladki to make the uh, the only threat, the only th the only real threat possible and was able to make a 13 point move and steal the game and to the best of my knowledge with the information that i have received it might be so that uh, the uh, it, it's a full sweep all over the board like from 01 to 04 a nine point field with road dorito on the right yeah, exactly. So we are talking about the um, the field with uh, which Lapinkoski would have been able to take with the with the with the regular curve. Now let's make sure of the uh, of the scores. So a two zero win for uh, Gladki. Which puts him, uh, which puts Tutesia at uh, two zero. Then we have a look at Tevainen, which is unfortunately also a two zero. And then the final match of Neth Track also completed, which doesn't sound too good. <laughs> and it is not too good, as it has been a rather clear win of 18 points, and the other one just a landslide win of over 30 points. So Pushkin. Uh, sorry, uh, Nat Natasha being able to take down the fourth and final match point for Tutesia and seems so that uh, that the Belarusian people have been able to muster up a rather strong looking team with uh, several expert players and uh, this is this has as as uh, just been a rather cold shower today, for uh, uh, for both uh, Finland in general and also to my stream as I've taken a lot of emotional damage here from uh, from from having the stream uh, most likely cut off at some point due to the internet con uh, issues which I have for some reason had um, quite a few times in the recent days, I'm not sure why, and then uh, unfortunately the commentary is also lost because I again forgot that I was muted for some time, but I think we still managed to get at least most of the game, I sincerely hope so. But for sure, congrats to uh, to Tutesia for the rather convincing uh, 4-0 uh, full sweep over Finland, and uh, I'm gonna be definitely uh, pushing the teammates of mine to uh, to watch today's stream, and uh, um, as long as it is like actually viewable uh, viewable in terms of um, in, in terms of the analysis and uh, I am still quite sure that uh, I will be able to point out some mistakes they did but now today's second match will be um, Ukraine Italy and it's gonna start 
just in uh, like eight minutes or so. So let's uh, prepare for that. Tomorrow already going to be another stream. And it is going to be uh, Latvia versus, um, let me actually check. So Latvia versus, yeah, uh, Latvia versus Belgium, which is not on the website just yet, but, but I will be streaming that and it's going to be at uh, 1800 UTC. So we'll see how the collision of these two great teams will go on. Now let's start focusing on the Ukraine and Italy's match. Also on Sunday will be one more match for Finland, which is going to be against Spain. And it's going to be a uh, full 5v5 and it's and I will be streaming that also. And as the custom is, it will start at 1800 to the benefit of everyone really <laughs> now let's have a look at the uh, lineups of of uh, ukraine italy so it's gonna be uh, dewaka versus uh, barry uh, nasario versus james Smile and Lambe, as well as Stare Bravo, Polo Verde, and Fanalexen versus uh, Gilio. Uh, I might be more or less in favor of Ukraine on this one, just in terms, uh, just um, due to the uh, recognizable names. I uh, um, I ha haven't actually seen uh, Barry James or uh, Polo Verde uh, play from Italy, I think, at all. But uh, Lampe and Giulio, I certainly have not to be. Uh, no, they, they are they are not the the average players you want to you want to mess with. <laughs> Uh, but still uh, taking into account the uh, massive potential of the ho of the of the complete Ukrainian team, which has proven itself like quite a few times, like in almost everywhere. <laughs> I want to say then. Uh, I think the uh, the favorites are going to be definitely uh, the Ukraine. As a reminder to you all, today is the 10th of April and today is the final day when you have the possibility to register your team to the competition, to the World Team Carcassonne Online Championships. Um, I think you have time until midnight and we are still, to the best of my knowledge, missing few teams from the uh, fr from the tournament lineup so be sure to make that happen you just again you only have like couple hours left to uh, to, to register up and if you don't then uh, you most likely will be out from this season and uh, none of this needs to happen as a matter of fact, let's see which teams are actually still missing or which of the uh, more known as there are debutant teams um, in this season. 
at least uh, Finland, Croatia and uh, Vietnam. Um, I think actually Ukraine... Uh, wait, does Ukraine... Yeah, so Ukraine is missing from here. I think... Indeed it is. So I'm not sure what's going on with, with Ukraine, but they are really pushing to the final minutes to, um, to register their team. There might also be some other uh, more known team uh, which has not which has not yet registered so final reminder again that uh, do push your captain to make that happen Helga saying watching uh, Polo Verde seems a good choice yes yeah, sure why not ah well, Sweden is out of the competition since they don't have enough active players, which is a shame since uh, we won't be seeing Helge then in, in the VTCOC, so that's a talent wasted on, uh, on, on, on this year at least. Hopefully the future Yes, will be a little more kind. Let's, uh, you know, of course, let's do keep in mind that uh, the debutant teams have not yet been able to, uh, uh, of course, take part into the tournament. At least for Finland, I can say that it has been exactly due to the lack of of um, players that have been interested in the competitive scene, but. To, uh, well, but today's, oh, not, not today's, but uh, this year's season seems that there might be some light at the end of the tunnel since uh, we have been now able to make the full roster and hopefully also we will be able to keep that going in the future as well. So let's have a look. Okay, just just under the expert rank, and we have started. Now a shared city for both, and then uh, Polo with. A five point road, which means that he does have the advantage at the moment since the players are equal on points and he has the only feature on the board. I don't really like the fact that uh, uh, that, that green left this triple city unmeable since it is the start of the game and there are absolutely no city features on the board and this would this will be the only one which is the sole reason what i why i think that uh, this is worth me pulling although i generally do advise against me pulling lonely triple cities but that is only in this in the case of of the game having advanced to the middle game or then if there are just like generally other city features that you have already in your control because these types of cities are very uncomfortable to build with really any tiles because you need at least three city caps and then if you start building it with triangles like one by one then you're gonna be uh, using quite a many turns on it with really no guarantees that your opponent is not going to attack it. Wow. Uh, 
interesting stuff happening on the board. So uh, Polo deciding that uh, he does not like almost at, at any cost leave an empty an empty city cap to uh, uh, to start it for uh, to use, and so decides to just uh, give the city cap to Stares city, which I heavily disagree with, because the city can be actually completed in just a couple of moves. Like, just imagine if Stare just gets a city cap here, then it's already a major, major threat that this city actually gets completed rather soon. Whereas if Polo just uh, starts a city, for example, here, going down, then he's still going to be leaving a city cap, but uh, it's going to be restricted and uh, he's not going to be a, he's not going to be building up uh, Stare's city. Like, see what I mean? Like, this city can actually be finished quite soon. Now it's only two tiles from completion, and this would be a tremendous tile for Apollo to continue this city. But uh, also a tremendous tile for uh, to do stuff elsewhere as well, like he does. Although I would like for uh, Apollo to guide this this um, city cap to the to, um, different direction facing down so that he would have a good use actually for like a tri for something like a triple city with a field or to a uh, extender to go over here and then uh, be able to rather easily join this uh, this city The worst nightmare of Polo just became reality. And uh, everything is starting from this tube divider. Added one city cap to the city of red, which just in three moves, uh, four moves actually, uh, four, three out of four moves that Stare has now made have been just completing this city with absolutely no interceptions. Just a free city with no competition or anything. Uh, I mean, this would be like the most ideal scenario that uh, you can ever get in a, in, in, a, in a competitive game. Like you are just gonna be ahead 10 points on the scoreboard and you have a six point field, which has a lot of potential to grow here, here and here. And looks like it's gonna indeed be a rather big field. And then you are not in a meeple, in a meeple disadvantage and your opponent doesn't really have features almost at all. There's like, more or less shared road, a rather uncomfortable looking city because it can be restricted or uh, or attacked or attacked from this square. And Polo is just oh, it's not not the, not the best tile, but but I think there is a strong use for it, and it is over here indirectly continuing your city and making sure that uh, you are likely uh, that only or not, not only but uh, making sure that this square is, is restricted to a regular straight road which would be able to cut red off from the 
seven point road that green has or then a road monastery but of course since there are only two road monasteries it is more likely for green to be able to block this connection before Stare is able to save it. Could, he, could maybe even uh, take a two-point road, although I think it's not the most enjoyable one because there's going to be three three road ends on both sides. So instead, Polo just decides to take calmly two points and not be and uh, just to be unperturbed by any threats that this one square might cause to his city. Now Polo does he get does it does he get the feeling of taking two points gets to go over here or huh just decides to take to take a nine point field which I kinda have to disagree with because the thing is that uh, uh, red is not going to be taking this nine point field at any time soon if or uh, as long as it can be like connected through here or or from here it just wouldn't make too sense uh, it, it just it just wouldn't make too much sense because it would be just over committing on the field with three meeples when your opponent has no meeples on it so which is why i think uh, polo would have been just better off going over here meepling this one point road and trying to steal the now shared nine point road trying to get some compensation that uh, he definitely needs now that this uh, city is completed and also because just generally uh, yeah also because just generally uh, Stare Bravo now has such a lead with the fields and uh, uh, with just uh, the scoreboard Which is why now Stare decides to use that possibility, which uh, Polo left. Now going over here, undoubtedly going over here. I don't think this three points is worth it. Yes. Stare ends the road and now is posing a significant threat to Polo. And... Uh, the threat of snatching this shared road and completing a 14 point road getting back two meeples for uh, in, for the for the price of one being in uh, being on equal meeples and being like plus 20 on the scoreboard and up on the board a horrible situation at the moment for for polo as he needs to make something happen now he is now trying to get the uh, block on the square Stare takes two points and this square which was possible to block off with this uh, crossroads now causes major issues for for green and it's it's really not looking good for green here one divider is already out as well, so the chances that uh, Polo is going to be able to separate his city from this triple city is rather unlikely. Uh, 
and the completion of this city will take quite a few tiles actually like like in the most ideal in the most ideal scenario it's going to be like maybe a triple city city cap triangle triangle in order to build the city like as safely as you can but you know that's that that's just a major major if that happens which likely will not be the case But indeed, this is the hole that uh, Polo has dug for himself as a result of just not using the tiles that he has had to their to, to their maximum potential. Like he has not been 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 taking like like multi-purpose moves. He has been he has been doing he has been doing single-purpose moves. With this, just not not peopling a city, not taking an, another feature at the beginning. With uh, this, not not taking uh, the possibility of, of removing the threat of the square and maybe taking a road, but instead just taking simply two points and leaving a city cap and just leaving this leaving this uh, tile alone. Uh, or square, square, leaving the square alone to cause issues, and then with this divider, was able to, of course, finish his four-point city and start a new one. But he did not cause any major issues for Stares City, because you know, just on a couple moves earlier, he was more or less helping Stare to finish the city. And even like with this move that uh, Polo just decided to calmly finish a, a four point city instead of doing anything over here, instead of like uh, maybe not maybe not attacking but but more like preparing an attacking spot would have been uh, well would have been a great move with this tile, although. Of course, Stare will have the chance to uh, to uh, to save the city. I mean, when you have the situation that uh, your opponent is complete is gonna uh, is gonna complete a large city very soon, you want to do at least something to it. Whereas now, Palo just uh, basically was accepting his faith and. Uh, just taking guaranteed meeple back and three points, which is just too weak in a situation like this. Also, Polo now has a four point meeple stuck as an unfortunate result of a start as successful blocking attacks, first the triple city and then start a, being able to use the regular straight lines which, uh, which he does nothing else with to block this city. Polo is able to make the four point cities but uh, it's not going to be enough to win this game if he just keeps making you know, four point cities. He needs to have a a larger threat. Yeah, just just needs to form a larger threat. Eventually, uh, Polo might even have to resort into attacking this field and trying to get a meeple majority on it, which is going to be super difficult because anything that you place here can be instantly blocked. And uh, the other attacking spots just don't really exist because even though like there are still three regular crossroads or like or field crossroads to go here, then 
you don't really want to be the one who puts it there because you would be giving two meeples back to, to red. And if you go with a farmer over here, then I honestly don't think that red will take those meeples back. I think red will not place a field cross road there. Green starts yet another four point city. Now minus 19 on the scoreboard, 16, 20. 19, minus 25 on the scoreboard, and a and one meeple less. 19, but min minus 19 and a meeple less on the scoreboard with very little threats actually, because Polo doesn't have a a major threat of any kind to finish. A, a large feature like this doesn't really count because this uh, city is still attackable at any point like for example now Starabrava could go here meeple the city and negate this threat which he's gonna do and now I think like Stare doesn't really need to do anything <laughs> Like he can just wait for a um, a field crossroad, go here, then get two meeples back, maybe even meeple this uh, four point road when he gets that, or this uh, six point field, get get even more points and then be again in a, in a meeple advantage, and uh, it's just not gonna be good for Polo, who's not gonna be who's not gonna be able to make much stuff happen. Green missed the wonderful opportunity he had with any of the city caps building the city indirectly as you said with a farmer flipping for a monastery. Um, where at has this situation been? I'm not exactly sure. Can maybe still come back with the monasteries if he gets some meeples back? Yeah, but there are there there aren't really great monastery spots like like you can go like here and here for like six points, but like that's about it. Maybe here, but uh, the monastery spots that uh, that are on this map at the moment are really not that good. With uh, considering that you have like two meeples, or even if you had more meeples, then you know this like. It, 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 it like kind of looks good that you have another monastery spot like right next to it, but uh, this second monastery is very difficult to complete because it is already going to be restricted with this road and this field. And uh, this just might not be like you know, quick enough because uh, taking into account that there are only 13 tiles remaining in the deck, uh, it's just not like... It's it's not enough tiles. Also, it seems that the Star Bravo is just just cruising through, just gets the field crossroad, takes the six point field at the at the um, at the bottom, and then now even gets to connect it with the main field, with this juicy road monastery, getting five points in the process and. Uh, you know, in a, somehow, in, somehow, by every passing tile, this is looking just worse and worse and worse for Polo. Gonna be able to take like three points, but uh, these points are just not gonna be not gonna cut it. 
minus uh, plus 22 for red 12 point field uh, so plus 34 plus 9 43 plus 5 48 and then 42 36 35 34 Polo has to somehow get 34 points with like five tiles that he has. Not too likely. And now there aren't even all that many point scoring opportunities for like big points because the, the most uh, the most pernicious tiles being the road monasteries are gone, which would be great to, for example, try getting a majority somehow over here or or just attack this lonely nine point field or something. But uh, since they are gone, you know, like there isn't like um, those uh, high scoring and high high impact tiles anymore remaining in the deck that would be able to to somehow in a miraculous way get a, a, a billion points for uh, for Apollo. Starry unfortunately cannot take the six point field which he surely would like to take as he will, he will be forced to give Polo the opportunity to get that field. Instead, Stare, I think you could just go maybe over here, just take the four points, because you can't really, really rely on the fact that Polo might not just for some reason take this six point field. Which is why I think Stare should just uh, settle with the four points and then maybe add one more point to his monastery on the final move. Not that he really needs to count the points because he is leading by like over 30, but uh, doesn't really make sense to wait for this exactly. So now Polo just gonna take we have all six points here, or six points here, or six points really anywhere. Uh, this is actually a, a, like slightly better because he will then a be able to take the six points on his final move from this uh, field. So a good prioritization by Polo, assuming that with the final tile he is able to place it to s to this to here, here, or here, or here. Would be a different story if it was like a triangle with a road, but since it is not, I, I want, I, I guess like it, it is a tile with a field on it, since there are just so many of them, although I'm not sure of the exact amounts. Stare should just go over here, take three points, because this castle is not on the larger field. Does exactly that, and Polo takes the six points. And we'll see just by, just by how many dozen of points Polo is now behind. Rough estimate is 25 to 30. Thirty points it is on the dot. And a Rather landslidey win for Stare on this first game, putting him in a, in a one zero lead. And for some reason, Vasimir is is uh, 
writing to me in Finnish. I do appreciate the kind gesture, but I have no idea why. Okay. Ah, all, uh, LR saying that uh, it's 104 Italy already, although I am not. I don't know which match has ended, if any. But let's have a look, see for, for example, Giulio, where the situation is. Wow, he has played a, a lot of different games. A uh, fan election is winning at the moment 1 0. And looks like there's a huge, huge point lead for fan election, but is there compensation on the board? For Giulio to make up for it, there is uh, well, Giulio is in control of the large field one, two, three, four, five, six, and then possibly a shared nine point field. So that's gonna put him at plus uh, minus six, then plus two. equal minus 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So actually Giulio is plus 12 with the help of this huge ruin. But how many tiles does the Ukrainian have to connect to it? 1, 2, 3, oh, two field triangles. Okay, and then no triple cities, but two field triangles, uh, two, two field triangles, which is already a 75% chance to connect to this ruin, getting straight up 10 points. 10, 12, yeah, 10 points. And uh, maybe possible to attack from here as well. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh, there is still four triangles or triple, or triple cities left. So there is definitely a possibility to attack from here. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so it's going to be two field triangles and two field, uh, two field triangles and two road triangles left. Giulio for sure going to go over here. As he does, and uh, Giulio is not actually actually now. Now that Final Action got this, Giulio is forced to have at least one of the triangles, so he will be in control of this ruin. He immediately gets it, and if Giulio gets the other field triangle as well, then he will be able to get uh, either he will be able to get three, four, seven points with it as he's taking three points away from fan election and adding three points to himself plus the one point from this so seven point move and then uh, a road triangle for Giulio if I did not count wrong which is gonna be I did, I did count wrong, okay. Uh, but why? Wait, what? But this is just a mistake because Giulio has two meeples in, in here, and he would be able to t to have a seven point move with this, and then Fanelexon will be only able to take three points from either here or here. So it, it will it would be a plus four, a, a net plus four move. Just going with the tr road triangle here, but now it is a plus minus zero move. Uh, interesting choice. 
but I don't think it will matter in terms of the final points. I think Giulio still wins because he is holding the 18 point field. Oh, he doesn't win! He doesn't win! Oh my days! Does he lose by four points? Oh no, 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 no. Unbelievable. So, this final move, this, fi this final move, which Giulio plundered, just decided the game. Because now he would, he was, it, it was a plus minus zero move, like net wise, because three points here for Fan Alexum and three points here for, Gui and three points here for Giulio. Whereas here, a seven point move, seven point move. And then Fan Alexum will be just able to take three points here or here or here, which is, you know, a, pl a, net, a net plus four for Giulio, putting him 102 to 102. And because Fan Alexum was the starting player, then uh, Giulio would win and he would tie the score. But uh, instead, a tremendous mistake by Giulio and was, uh, and now Van Luxen secures the 2 0 win for the Ukraine and gets the, uh, gets the match point. Definitely something that you should be more careful with. Don't, don't, don't just don't think of the points that you like roughly get. Think of the points. Th think of the like uh, net gain that you get when when all tiles are placed. And actually, here, like here, it doesn't even matter. Like you would still you would you would still be getting like directly seven points. If you just place the triangle in the right spot, you know. <laughs> but it might be it, it might be so that you know some players would think that if you place the triangle there, then you would only get plus four because uh, be, yeah because you only like directly add four points to yourself, but you gotta take into account that you also take away three points from your opponent. But even so, like four points is better than three points. Like it would still be a better move, even if you did not take that uh, point loss for yellow into account. <clears throat> okay. And next victim is going to be Smile. Who seems to be finished with the games and seems to be so that the Lampe has been able to take a quick 2-0 win or 0-2. Crafty saying, I think he thought it was, it was uh, he was only 2v1 before the connection. It it might be so. Uh, maybe it was just uh, like a missed in a, a misinterpreted map, since uh, since Final Action did have two meeples uh, tied in that in that city, but like but because both of them were not included in the larger part of the ruin, it might be so that uh, uh, Giulio just got a bit distracted, which. If we go if if we go by that, then well, it definitely paid off for Van Alexen to place the second people <laughs> to to attack the ruin. House James holding up is winning by one point. Uh, sorry, not, not 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 by one point, but uh, one game. A strong 600 rated player. K. 
Okay. Five points difference on the scoreboard. Plus nine, shared road. Plus seven, shared field. Plus 14, plus six. So equal on points with the features. And, uh, but James does have one meeple more in hand. Does have some vulnerabilities with this city though, or maybe future vulnerabilities. That's a that that's that's very wild. Taking just just a two point road when you have two meeples. Like, but why would you not take this two point road over here where it's like more safe and you don't need to tie a third meeple of yours to here? Because whenever you take, well, ideally, I think Nasario wants like a curve here to add two points to his road, or even a crossroad will do just fine. But when he does so, then he's gonna endanger this square to a full block. When there are, when there are still two tiles to save both of the monasteries. As, which is why I don't think this is a good move at all from Nasario, Because his road people is now essentially frozen. He cannot place anything here, as long as this chance still exists that he can save the monasteries. Now doesn't have anything really to do with the extender. Wouldn't it, it would not be too good to start cities with, since he's going to need two city caps and he doesn't have his meeples in the best places in order to get them back, he might have to just discard it. But where does he discard it? Because here is bad because it uh, mess it messes it it messes up his road. He can't do it here. Here it's gonna provide issues with the road. Here the same thing, but just double threat with the monastery. Here, not really like trying to block your own city. Here, not really because you don't want to meeple this. There just aren't any good moves that he can make the, with, with this extender. And decides to add just two points to the, to the city, but he is now making it even more difficult for himself to get meeples back. Uh, it's... It's really not looking all that good for yellow. Like even though he has these juicy monasteries, he just has like all of his meeples frozen because his features are so close to him uh, to to other features that he has. It's really not good situation to be for Nasario. It's horrible actually. Okay, thank you for the information, Helge. So, Barry 10 2 de Vaca. I will, of course, double check that <laughs> uh, after this game. But. Ah, it's also posted the the wrong way in the chat. No, Ukraine is supposed to be on the left, Italy on the right. Now it messes up with everyone's head, but try to hold on. James, now blink should be like. An instant move, I think. 
just blocking the city of Nazario and not, uh, not allowing Nazario to connect to the larger ruin. Exact stuff. Now, if is, is Nazario gonna go here and end the road and just YOLO it and whenever he gets a curve, he's just, just gonna finish the road and risk the complete block of these monasteries? It's certainly like an appealing plan, which like, you know, you always could work, but uh, he does it. I still think he is in quite the trouble, but he, like I said, he might indeed just need to start YOLOing because his meeples are in horrendous spots. And he's gonna need to release at least some meeples to, for example, take this nine point monastery spot or, or eight point monastery spot, or to make any use with uh, f uh, from city caps. James could just add two, uh, take two points, or actually even go here and threaten the completion of this city at some point. Oh no, 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 no! I don't. I think that's a way too big of an over commitment for James, as even though he does have the meeple majority at, uh, for now, or used to have, then you only have. Well, actually, all, all, all three tiles, so one out of eight chance, uh, one, uh, one in eighth chance that uh, Nasario gets them all. But still, like you don't, I don't think you need to attack the field at the moment. I don't think you are losing plus five, plus twelve, uh, sixteen, eighteen, fourteen, six, minus four, minus three. No, I don't think he needed that farmer because I I think you would just rather be in a plus uh, in in a minus three situation with an extra meeple than than having this situation over here which is like if I get this tile I will score big and 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 maintain and ma maintain my lead which I technically already had does however get the second meeple back from this road which serves him well Nasario yet again with only one meeple would I reckon would love to take a monastery here or here but it's a it's a very thin line of how much he wants to risk with these monasteries how long is he willing to wait for those daggers to come. That's the question that he needs to ask from himself. And the answer I think should be quite a long time actually because he was willing to take this road and he was willing to put himself into a position that uh, he's gonna draw one of these daggers before ending the road. James now completing the full threat of finishing this city and joining the field. Also, I believe if James manages to to close this to close this field, like for example going here and just taking a four point uh, road right now, four point loop road, then there's gonna be almost no attacking spots to the field like this like via from a curve extremely risky and from here uh, via that uh, dagger but also very risky especially with 30 tiles remaining in the deck
James now goes for the block, but, 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 this is one of those situations where you might not actually want to do anything. Because when you have multiple features to block at the same square being this, then it might be worth not to block at all. Words of wisdom by, by a player that I cannot remember at the moment, but not my own words, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> but I do think that uh, they are indeed a fitting description here, since uh, like James was, James was doing just fine with, uh, with with not blocking and just letting Nasar and just letting Nasario to wait and uh, to wait and wait and wait to get one of these uh, two remaining daggers for possibly until the end of the game. Okay, that works. That works. Actually, that actually, you know, that's a really good, a, a, a splendid move. Because with what James does here is that uh, he not only is able to, to join the field with the two remaining daggers, but he can now make another loop going from here and join from here. So he doesn't necessarily even need the daggers. This is just, just, just a fantastic move by James. Fantastic... Uh, uh, vision of, of the situation and uh, he does exactly that and now the most ideal tile to connect is going to be a a, a um, road triangle because it will leave no cause no possible connection spots from here although it will leave, it will leave a connection spot from here but still Possibly, like, I think James is, James is going to do this, uh, is, is going to complete this loop with any possible, uh, with, with just any curve that he gets into his hands. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, just still 10 curves remaining. And I think only one, oh no, 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 no crossroads at all. Which makes this move even better because it is an unblockable field connection. In the sense that there cannot be a crossroad that goes here. Because crossroads don't exist anymore. Just a fabulous move by, by James with the crossroad. Taking two points, preparing a four-point loop road when he gets the dagger and prepares a potential second road to the field. Just fantastic. Now, what is James going to come up with with a straight road? Maybe just take a six point field from here so that you have more green squares to build on. Or here also, also doable so that you will be able to, to then block all possible field connections with one road tile. Any other purposes? Well, maybe here. Taking away a a rather desperate possible attempt from Nasario to come to the field via curves uh, is more or less doable if you don't want to invest the meeple.
or maybe here, trying to restrict these squares so that uh, Nazario is not able to place anything here and try and harass this connection. But given that there are still t those two daggers remaining that fit over here, I don't think Nazario will be bothered too much by the second opportunity to connect. James does the straight trick, preventing the possible scenarios of Nassario indeed trying to connect via loop road. Nassario pulling one of the two daggers. Unfortunately for him, it is a dagger to the wrong direction. And now he does go for the harassment of this second connection, since only one tile left to go, to go here. And if Nazario actually manages to pull that on his second, on his, on his uh, uh, incoming turn, he would then not only be able to get four points from this city, but also to block this connection entirely, limiting this square to a crossroads and create a connection possibility to the field from here for himself. So getting that final dagger that James needs would be a, a massive tile for Nazario. Okay, instead decides to just take the four points and create the possibility to go to the field anyways, not to block this connection, but it doesn't really matter because Nazario will just be able to go over here with, this, with his Meepo, attack the 15 point field and then get a possibility to block this connection with a straight road or a, a, or, or a curve or anything like that. James, is he going? Is he gonna go with a slightly risky plan? Go over here, limit the square to the same dagger that is needed here for Nazario, and drop a farmer. No, he's not gonna go for it. Instead, he has faith on getting this rem this one remaining dagger. Uh, well, the reason why Nazario is not trying to uh, to connect through uh, this dagger, I think, is because he doesn't want to place that much uh, that much uh, uh, that much of the, of the game on uh, on on this on, on getting one of these uh, two tiles, because he would have like basically all his eggs in one basket, and like just. Here is just overall a better connection spot in all ways because there are more tiles here. And then, wow, James gets this also. And and if Nazario gets the dagger to go here, then well, good for him. He gets two meeples back anyways. And chances are that he's gonna connect uh, from here anyway, like he does now. And now he's just going to be waiting for the daggers, but is it going to be too late? Because James will now attack this nine point field, or actually, oh, even better, go here and take the, take the six point field first, and then later attack this nine point field. Nazario, actually, actually, Nazario should go here and block this connection opportunity to the field. I think. James now 30 points ahead. 38. Uh, 44, 40, 39, 30. 
14 points ahead is James is the lead of James and with two meeples in use whilst Nazario is still waiting for these monasteries to be completed it's looking like uh, Nazario it's looking like Nazario will have shrinking chances all the time James could even do stuff like this and this and go to the and and go to the farm with a third meeple just for the shits you know <laughs> um there might be even a number of tiles to fit you know, to both squares and it might be so that the, this connection would be rather secure maybe i'm not sure about that one two three four five six two triple cities remaining both oh, actually one with road one without then uh, two daggers remaining so that's four tiles then an extender does not exist actually um one two three four five six seven three triangles one two three four so two with field one with road so that's seven tiles um one two three four five six seven eight one regular curve one two three four five six seven one straight line so that's what nine tiles and then Probably like a couple of city caps remaining. Well, Nasario gets this. And actually, just in time, as now Nasario might have a chance to get an eight point city. Doesn't, James gets it. And actually, a super good tile for James, uh, not only to, to, get the nine, to get the eight point city, but also scores three points for this field in case uh, it will not connect and entirely blocks Nazario's chances of getting to the field from uh, from from here so a super good tile for James now Nazario I don't think there are tiles to go here one two three four Four, five. No, there are not. Oh, oh, wait. There is one regular monastery. So it might be. Oh yeah. Okay, okay. Nasario is gonna go here and hope to get both the monastery and the. Uh, and the field triangle and the regular curve to have taken all tiles that fit here and then have this uh, 18 21 point field under his control this might work you know no no kidding this might work and given given Nazario's huge deficit in points he has to go for such risky plans. He's like minus 20 something. Like minus 20 on the scoreboard, 23, 27, 29, 32, 30, 27. He's minus 24. Like he has to go for this. He has to rely on getting the monastery, the curve and the, tri and the field triangle. All of them. I don't think there are too many other options that he can do. Hello, Kilherbe. Welcome to the evening fun. Ah, uh, he doesn't go for it. He doesn't go for it. And now I think. Nasario will have to go for this instead. Well, of course, you know, given that uh, this plan would not have 
worked, uh, I still think that Nazario should have gone for it because, like, he can't, yeah, you know, like doing stuff like this that going over here and then over here and possibly going with a third meeple over here, like equalizing the field is just not going to be nearly enough points for Nazario to to catch James. There's just no universe in where that plan works. Triangle's gone, so... Ah. Okay, this, this might bring some... some uh, haste. I think there are still one dagger and one regular curve, which is this, and now one, two, three, four, five, six. A, a six point loop road plus three points to the field as this field was six and this is nine, so a nine point move. Nice spot um, from Nasario being able to complete a uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh, 14 point city. But actually still has a chance to get to the field uh, with the final remaining dagger at least. But it's not going to be enough points. And because the remaining, uh, because the other remaining tile is a monastery, I think James should, ha should have gone over here and meeple the farm and then get if if Nazario gets this exact tile then it means that James gets the monastery goes over here and gets this 15 point field to his um, to, uh, like to play with his uh, yeah gets this 15 point field to himself so it would just be a trade off of um what this is apparently why you don't listen to me this is the, uh, this is this is completely why you do not listen to me <laughs> because I have mis horribly miscounted the remaining tiles. I have not noticed that the fourth monastery is over here. Ah, uh, god damn it! Okay, uh, <coughs> never mind. Uh, forget this. A, a terrible idea by me, and also a terrible idea by me with this. Still, would I be cool if they worked, right? <laughs> uh, 136 points to 116. 20 point lead. And is that actually already the second win for James? I think so. It is so. It is a two o uh, an o two win for Nasario. Yes, arena champion cannot count. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> you know this is why some plebs like me can uh, can uh, win can win arena because you know you you don't you don't need to, you don't need the skill you don't need to count stuff you know you can just count wrong and just just win get just just win the games you know it ain't hard just win the games <laughs> uh, okay one three and with that i stand corrected seems that i should have had more trust on italy's side uh at the moment yeah let's quickly check the berries because i'm very paranoid and i don't trust uh my chat <laughs> Okay, so it was 02, and so who's remaining? Nasario, James has finished. Smile, Lambe. Okay, so Polo Verde is. has been able to get to a decider by winning against Sare Bravo by exactly one point. And this is gonna be the final game of the evening. Mm, 
k plus 1 plus 8 16 compensated by this ruin of 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, so plus 3, 4 green, minus 5, equal field, uh, minus 11, minus 3, minus 9, for now, for, wait, ah, oh, fuck. <coughs> Okay, plus 7 for red, plus 10, plus 16, plus 24, plus 37, 20, uh, 28, 20, 12, plus 12 for red, no? Okay and has the possibility of maybe even overrunning this nine point field <coughs> five six multiple curves remaining so it is it is indeed possible um looks looks just fine to me is it possible to complete this ruin one Two. Oh, there is one tile to go over here still. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Unfortunately, there are no road triangles, so it is not possible to complete this city. Starep might be. Oh, I think here would be a decent move actually. Because Starep would then. Uh, would. Uh, might not need to. Uh, to unify himself to the nine point field from here, but he could instead do it from here. And not give two additional points to, to Polo. Like, even though. Like this unifying would be only worth uh, three points because that is only is, is already scoring for these two cities. You know, with straight roads, uh, you know, might be worth to still do that. Maybe like one and a half point move without maple investment. I would say that's doable. Meanwhile. Polo um, starting another field here. Now worth six points. Ah, but he has a, a more trickier idea. Because there is one road monastery remaining, he is aiming to get that and score a seven point road at the same time getting his second meeple to the shared and uh, to the shared a nine point. Yeah, nine point uh, field. So there, there is a wonderful idea behind this second farmer. Which, you know, if you think about it, it it's going to be a 16 point move if uh, Polo is able to pull or, or to draw that, uh, that road. Uh, that that uh, road monastery, which might put him straight back into the game. Now I imagine just a discard to here somewhere. Ah, well, Star is gonna go here, or should go at least. I know the four points are. Delicious, but he definitely needs to prevent this stuff from happening. Oh, wait, why would he go here? 
<laughs> because it, it's 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 Polo's road. <clears throat> yeah, maybe not go here, but yeah, uh, still this I think is absolutely the move. Gotta prevent the use of that road monastery. That is possibly the only way that Polo gets back into this game. Let's do a little point count again. So plus six, 12, 25, 33, 25, 20, 11. So plus eleven for red, and yeah, I think if he just do, if he just does this, he's gonna be like golden. With six tiles remaining, I heavily doubt that there is gonna be anything that uh, Polo is gonna be able to do. But he's thinking awfully long about this. And I don't like that he has other plans. He might not do this. Is he trying to take a look and see if there is a connection opportunity here? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, there are two regular curves. That would get him to the field. Uh, but are there city caps that go into here? I'm not sure. One, two, three. Okay, he does it. Thank God he does it. Um, then two points for Polo, I think. Not much else he's going to be able to do. Uh, two points from here. Creating a three point road for the road monastery. Is he going to be able to join the, the nine point field from, from somewhere else? I don't think so, or actually he, he is able to join it from here if he gets a curve, would be able to make a, a 13 point move, but he needs to drop a farmer of course before that, and there might not be suitable tiles to do that without any risk at least. So let's have a look at the what are the, the exactly the remaining tiles. So the ro road monastery and then uh, two regular curves. So there are three and then something else. A triple city. And then two more tiles that we are missing here. Triple city is gone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, so a uh, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. So the city cap and one other tile. Oh, I think a wonderful move for Polo would be to go, I think, over here, guide the city downwards because there are uh, at least uh, because there are two regular curves and the road monastery remaining. So chances are that Stare Bravo will not get a tile that can block this connection, and then Polo gets a curve, gets a gets 13 points, and then I think I don't think he's going to be able to do anything after that. But 
Ah. Oh. Okay, so I swear, if if Polo now gets a curve, I'm gonna be super gutted that he didn't go for this move. Because I think there were splendid chances to actually make that happen. Ah, oh, he gets it. Ah, oh, it hurts my soul. It hurts my soul. And now actually Starbravo is able to uh, extend his field by three points and possibly on his on his move then also overrun this nine point field and uh, again increase the size of the field. Ah, oh, it's painful to watch. It's painful. And the final remaining tile was a crossroad. So there was indeed no possible way to block this connection except for the crossroad. And the chances were definitely on Polo's side to, to be able to make this uh, plan work for 13 points. Whereas now he got a 4 plus 3. So an extra 6 would be the case for Polo. And also, if he wants to be like very precise, like uh, instead of going here, just adding a, a just adding this one point to a uh, ruin that no one can take, just go over here instead and prevent Stare from doing any shenanigans on this side. Then at least Stare would need to give two points to Polo. If he wants to, if he if he wants to overrun this side of the field, and then uh, and and then Star goes with a road monastery over on this side. Uh, yeah, that seems to work. I mean, at least it would be two more points to Polo. So possibly, like, yeah, at least six points missed, I reckon, at the final tiles. Unfortunately, was not able to get the road monastery in time, but it was uh, unlikely to happen as well, as there were more curves than uh, road monasteries in the game. But nonetheless, a wonderful find by Polo to get his second farmer on this field and then have the opportunity of, of taking the seven point road plus getting a maturity on the nine point field. Um, this is a, um, blah, blah, blah. was a decisive game, no? Yep, so uh, Stare Bravo takes a point to Ukraine and uh, almost evens up the score to two and three. Not enough for Ukraine to get a win from today's match, but enough so that they don't go home empty handed and can be at least somewhat um, happy about today's result. Losing by one match point is no shame. Okay, now a heads up yet again for, uh, for uh, tomorrow's stream. It's going to be uh, uh, Latvia versus Belgium at 1800 UTC. You will, of course, see the announcement uh, this evening, most likely, as I will be uh, preparing that. And then uh, another stream on Sunday with Finland, Spain. And uh, if there are going to be additional streams this week, I do not know yet, but I don't have them scheduled. Possibly those will be the, the final two streams uh, this week and will be and uh, thus they will be the final 
friendly matches that friendly matches that we will see in on this season of the World Team Carcassonne Online Championships. And then when the 15th of April kicks in and the actual tournament week begins, we get to we, we get into the actual action and we get to stream the almighty actual tournament games with stakes up very high since every win is going to be important and as a reminder um, I think it was the top the top three teams or top four I think it was the top three teams uh, this season who uh, who will get the, opp the opportunity to send one of their players to the world to the world championships which is why this um, opportunity is good to use and which is why you definitely want to be in the top three to be able to give that chance to one of your players and of course then have more chances for your country to take the crown in in Herne 2024 for the world championship title that's gonna be it for today i will see you more soon i i, I will see you all soon with some more Carcassonne content tomorrow bye for now